Now, considering the huge size of this landscape, it should not come as any surprise that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples developed really clever tools to be able to navigate across this huge landscape. Now, there are many reasons why people would want to travel, right? Uh, some of those reasons could include uh, collecting and gathering seasonal foods and resources. Uh, other reasons could include accessing specific parts of country, say if you need to conduct a cool burn or take care of that part of country in, in any way. Uh, some reasons could be to access tools such as uh, grindstones which are used for cooking. Another really important reason was to trade. And so we see there are lots of reasons why people would need to travel. So yeah, let's take that example of trade and look at the, the context in which we would see it here on this continent. And um, if we actually look at the tracks that cover this country, trade is the most significant reason why a person would leave their country and travel to someone else's country. And that meant that travellers would need to know how they could get from one place to another across this vast land that we live on. And the main way in which they did that was through message sticks and song lines. And the way in which the travel was directed was through this memorization technique of song lines, which we'll explore now. So as we've discussed previously, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, peoples, they hold on to so much information using their memories. Uh, and stories are very much intentionally made to be multi-layered and multifaceted so that lots of different aspects can be stored within, say, one story, for example. Now, a lot of this information can also be embedded into physical features, say on the land or even up in the sky. Now, again, this is what we call a song line, this embedding of the information into a physical place. Now, at the base level, song lines, they're stories. They're also histories of the country from which they come from. We've already spoken about how they can act as visas, say to uh, communicate to a neighboring uh, group or neighboring nation that you have a right and responsibility to be traveling across their country. Uh, but there's lots of other uses for song lines. Uh, using them as just simply a navigational tool is incredibly useful and has been incredibly successful for nations all over this this land uh, and so that's what we're going to look at how song lines were specifically used as a navigational tool now they can mark routes on the land they can also mark those same routes in the sky uh, and it's actually these tracks that we see here uh, they're the tracks that reflect those song lines and the destinations that those song lines uh, have taken many, many nations over many tens of thousands of years. Now, when the European settlers first came to Australia, it was actually these same tracks uh, that the indigenous peoples here uh, used to show the explorers around and to show them how to get from different places. And it's these same tracks that we call highways today. We have a number of uh, quite well-known highways um, that used to be song lines or are still uh, very much song lines today, but they are also used as highways. We have the Air Highway, which goes through uh, basically Central Australia. We have the Great Western Highway, which is this huge highway going uh, very much across most of Australia. And then we have the Camilleroy Highway, which of course goes through our country. And then there are other tracks. So these are like special dreaming tracks. Uh, and they're not highways. Um, so these are stories that are so important that they're known all across Australia and even in certain circumstances, even all around the world. Um, and there are lots of stories with one particular um, celestial object, that's the open cluster, the Pleiades, and the constellation Orion, that um, depending on the country they come from, actually usually depict uh, the Pleiades as a, as a group of women usually the Seven Sisters or, or something along those lines, and Orion being some man that's consumed by his lust and likes to chase those sisters across the sky. 
And we have a version of this story within Gamilaroi culture as well, where the Pallades is called the Mie Mie, or the, the young girls. Um, and there is Orion as well, which we call the Bire Bire, which is the young boys. And in this story, it's about the Bire Bire chasing the Mie Mie across the sky. Um, which eventually usually leads to one of the sisters being captured. Now, across most Aboriginal nations, the variations in the Seven Sisters story or the stories related to the Pallades and Orion, they often uh, embed some really cool astronomical information, right? And, and it's these variations that we look out for when we're comparing and, and looking at these different stories. Now, for example, the Gamillary version of this story or one of the versions of this story talks about one of the sisters being shy and that she often hides behind uh, one of her other sisters, her older sister. Now, this can reflect a few different things. I could reflect that uh, throughout the year, different stars in the Pallades can be visible at different times. And often uh, one star may not be visible when throughout the year it might have been more visible or more bright. It could also be talking about something else that's quite significant. So when we look at the Pallades here on Earth with our, our eyes, you know, no telescopes, no cameras, just our eyes, we see five to six stars. Six stars if you're really, really lucky and have really great eyesight. So the fact that this story and many variations of this story, not just here in Australia, but around the world, refer to this idea that there's seven sisters, which could, you, know, you could assume is referring to uh, there being seven visible stars in this system. Now, this is uh, potentially suggestive of the idea that this story could be about 100,000 years old, as that is uh, believed to be the last time that seven stars were actually visible to the naked eye in this very specific system, the Pallades Cluster. And so if that is the case, this is very much the oldest story of all time that we know of. And this story um, itself, the, the Pallades, the Seven Sisters story, actually serves as a, as a great tool for crossing this continent itself. Um, so we learned um, previously in one of the lectures about the, um, the Central and Western Desert Seven Sisters story. Um, and so in that story, the sisters, they began in Matu country um, and they, were pursued across the Western Desert um, by Orion. Um, and he was, as he was pursuing them, they would leave a trail of features along the way. And those features that are actually embedded on the land, um, as they move across towards the APY lands in the Central Desert region, those features that are in that story are actually the features in which people would then use in order to move across the country. And it's really important for them to be able to move across large distances for their trade, as we've spoken about before. Now, different sections of the songline can be found all across this country, right from the east coast to the west. Um, and helping people cross the vast distances in this land is a powerful storytelling tool um, and embedding information about the land and the sky into these knowledge systems.